I want to make a few brief observations, so stay with me, um, uh, of, of, a, uh, of philosophical anthropology, because my real concern, my worry, is that the human person is endangered. And I'm going to try and explain what I mean by that in brief. You see, three centuries ago, a debate was introduced into the public arena by Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and this debate, which remains very much alive today, centers on whether the authentic individual, the authentic individual, exists prior to his life in society, or rather emerges out of his life in society. And downstream from this debate are two claims that remain at the heart of the progressive conservative dichotomy. For the progressive, one ought to enjoy the advantages of society whilst always emancipating himself from society to maintain his authentic self. Society is always a threat to his authentic self and hence necessarily in some way tyrannical of a patriarchal kind or otherwise. And it must ever be purified through ongoing revolution. In turn, the progressive will always favour the atomised and alienated individual over the accountable and communally bound individual who is formed by local and national loyalties. For us conservatives, on the other hand, attacks on the national way of life do not emancipate individuals from a disguised captivity. Rather, they threaten the very foundation of social relations within which emerges the human person, by which I mean the unique, irreplaceable individual who takes possession of his life and governs himself so as to be in right relation with others. Society is not some looming external force. Society is us, and we are society. Unique, irreplaceable individuals, that is to say persons, result from their civilization. Persons don't opt into their communities by some primordial contract. Indeed, nation has the same etymology as the word natal. It's from the nation that we are born into the world. <clears throat> Human beings actualize their personhood precisely by being inducted into the communities from which they have come with their histories, their cultures, laws, and customs. And via this process, people cease to be slaves to ignorance and appetite, and they discover their personal freedom. And this is the paradoxical truth of conservatism. We hold that it's by being inducted into our received shared civilization that our uniqueness as individual persons unfolds. Accordingly, and perhaps counterintuitively for the modern mind, tradition and freedom are correlated principles. The process of liberal atomization has made very difficult the sort of civilizational induction that is necessary for personal actuation. And this means that we may be seeing a process by which, as the Jewish philosopher Martin Buber suggested, persons may actually vanish altogether. Already, those in the vanguard of our progressive culture are increasingly like clones of one another. They claim to have realized their supposed uniqueness and authenticity while simultaneously embracing a very narrow groupthink, parroting the same narratives, and even increasingly sporting the same blue hair. 
I've, there's a noteworthy absence of blue hair at this conference, actually. <laughs> Emancipated from their received civilization, pre-societal, authentic selves turn out to be interchangeable with all other such selves. Human personhood is a phenomenon poised in the dynamism of human sociality. Persons don't emerge, sorry, persons emerge out of community and communities are very thin within the paradigm of liberal progressive atomization and individualism. Real communities are moral units with shared notions of purpose and meaning by which their members may live together. And for this reason, any given society is, at root, religious. For all societies, inasmuch as they are societies, are bound by some shared set of beliefs and practices pertaining to the most fundamental questions about our purpose, dignity, and destiny as a human community. Now, what does such a claim mean in the context of this country? In England, we have a national religion with a church by law established, enshrined in our constitution, a glorious affirmation of which we recently witnessed during the King's coronation. This established religion, however, is not the one we actually practice. 190 years have passed since the Reverend John Keeble ascended Oxford's university pulpit and declared that the nation had committed apostasy, a sermon that launched the Tractarian movement, which in turn revitalized Toryism, inspiring the young Englanders that eventually gave us Benjamin Disraeli. But that revival didn't last. And as John Henry Newman wrote, quote, Toryism came to pieces and went the way of all flesh. Just imagine if he could see it now. In any case, what I think someone like Keeble or Disraeli or Newman could never have envisaged was the nation's replacement of Christianity with a new religion altogether. Now, there's been a lot of talk over the past two days about woke, but I think that we actually haven't diagnosed woke properly. We need to recognize that woke is actually an expression of a very deep and actually very noble religious need, which has been neglected and abused in contemporary British society. The zeal observed among today's progressives marks a deeply religious attempt to provide a rapidly fragmenting community with a sense of common purpose. The trouble is, it's failing to do so. Here I join a growing number of conservatives who are highlighting the religious character of our progressivist culture. It has its own theology, its moral decrees, its sacrificial victims, its proselytizers, a highly effective inquisition, an exegetical methodology for interpreting history, an index of forbidden books. It has its iconography, especially and importantly the selfie, that frozen avatar of the disembodied authentic self. It has its saints and its martyrs, its doctrine of healthcare and safety as the topmost ethical values, its idolatry of technologies as the angelic mediators that will bring about a new heaven and a new earth, and it promotes the LGBTQ plus movement as the highest religious expression, with its public processions, flags and banners, and now a liturgical year complete with holy days and months of festivities. <laughs> This religion sees the state as a mortal god, to use the words of Thomas Hobbes, that will bestow the infinite capital P progress for which we beg. And everyone must join in the devotions of this public religion that promises not to redeem our human nature, but rather our denatured authentic selves by vanquishing human nature altogether 
And those who are insufficiently enthusiastic are judged heretics, and they must be judged, and they must be driven from polite society. The problem is that whilst this counterfeit religion purports to unify us in pursuit of an egalitarian utopia of infinite progress, it simultaneously atomizes us in pursuit of the pre-societal authentic self, the only self that can ever be truly equal to all other selves. Thus, whilst purporting to offer a loose conception of the good around which it can gather society, it concurrently divides us all in the paradigm of isolation and national repudiation. And what is the upshot? Whilst communication has never been so accessible and belief in social activism never so widespread, statistically, Britons have never before felt so insulated and so isolated and so alienated. Currently, the leading cause of death among teenagers and adults up to the age of 34 is suicide. We are a deeply, deeply unwell country. As the 18th century conservative Joseph de Maistre observed, an atomized people is a miserable and vulnerable people who will be forced to grovel before a divinized, all-encompassing administrative juggernaut. What someone like Maestra could never have imagined was the emergence of a massive information and surveillance industry working as one mechanism across much of the globe, manipulating almost every facet of life through a sort of technological omnipresence. This Leviathan has now encroached on every aspect of private association and civil society, deeming itself the providential lord of history. And this technologically driven globalism is now threatening to eliminate the human person by defeating his nature altogether via the vastly funded sorcery of transhumanism. It seems we are witnessing, to put things back into Maestra's idiom, the capture of our world by the forces of Satan's principality. The self-identification of global leviathan as providential lord of history cast off all its concealments during the COVID episode, for which, by the way, there has not been a proper reckoning. I didn't think you would like this all so much, so if you keep clapping, I'll really go over time, so you must... Um, <laughs> just, uh, I'm afraid I think you've got to just let me get on with it. Um, <laughs> under a Tory government, people were confined to their homes, with many plunged into crushing debt. The police morphed into roaming thugs. Hysteria was deliberately fostered. Experimental drugs were imposed with threats of unemployment if people didn't acquiesce, with many now suffering from vaccine injuries remaining largely ignored by their own government, and senior Tory ministers co-opted the public into a surveillance system by asking us to spy on our own neighbours. This sort of autocracy was duplicated across the world, and such a regime is exactly what you should expect as persons, as we know them, vanish from our world and are replaced with human cogs in a colossal global machine. I have opinions on face masks as well, but I'll leave those out for a bit. This is why, with every fibre of his being, Edmund Burke condemned what he called atheism by establishment, which would lend itself to the politics of, quote, a mischievous and innoble oligarchy with a purely geometrical and arithmetical conception of society. The challenge that Burke faced at the dawn of our secular age hasn't actually changed. He was opposing an atheistic imperial technocracy in embryonic form. We are facing it in maturity. The choices remain, nihilism or God. Or, put differently, 
idolatry and captivity masquerading as pleasure and safety, or the genuine freedom, meaning, and purpose that comes from acknowledging the spiritual dimension of who we are. Whether human personhood vanishes altogether will depend on how we choose. So to summarize, either persons precede society as so-called authentic selves, merely opting into society for its advantages, or persons emerge out of society. That is a meaning-driven community of people who belong together, animated by a sense of transcendent purpose. In short, between nihilism and the divine, there's no medium. Either way, however, as Disraeli famously observed, man will worship something. The question is then, what cultus, and by extension, what culture, do we want to have? One that unites us in a common moral project by which we emerge together as persons, or something else. In these aisles, I believe it's time to retrieve a genuine, theocentric conservatism, which can offer a spiritual and moral vision of the human person. Otherwise, if British Conservatives continue to be nothing other than diluted versions of their more progressive competitors, Conservatism won't only lose its place in the public arena altogether, but it will entirely deserve to do so. At present, there is a very widespread hunger for a serious spiritual and moral account of who we are and our common purpose as a national community. This hunger will be ignored by Conservatives at their peril. Thank you.